whoever is 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 um, in the administration. However, I you know I thought it was worth important to reiterate that from this administration's point of view, we will continue to focus on our core principles around protecting frontline services as far as possible, and those with the broadest shoulders bear the, the, the largest burden. Uh, and we also will make sure that in looking at all budget proposals, we will measure them against our three overarching corporate priorities, uh, jobs and investment, protecting vulnerable people, and narrowing the gap in inequalities. I think it's important that, that we have them at the forefront of our mind. Um, clearly, the corporate plan will be reviewed as the basis for um, looking at next year's budget. Um, but I think it, it is going to, to to be a really big task, and, and I notice uh, that national commentators um, are, are already starting to um, really question the sustainability of many local authorities, given the scale of the, the funding um, cuts that have to be made over the next three years. I, I, I read an interesting comment by Sir Merrick um, Cockell, who's the outgoing chairman, the Tory chairman of the Local Government Association, where he talks about um, uh, potentially 5.8 billion funding gap for local government as a whole between 2014 and 16, and um, particularly talks about a potential catastrophe in elderly care as a result of these savings. So I think we are we are really at the point really that um, many of the local services that we have taken for granted are, are under threat, and um, you know it's going to be a, a really massive challenge for us to maintain those services. However, um, we, we will do this job the best that we can, and the, the future council program that's um, talked about in paragraph 2.18 is a, um, a key um, program for us in, in, in terms of um, looking at remodeling the council. We, we've had, obviously, some detailed reports on that going forward. The other thing I, I would just like to um, highlight in the report is that we um, sadly will will inevitably have to look at um, uh, reductions in our in our workforce as a result of these cuts. Um, but I want to emphasise, and, and this is the assurances that I've given the trade unions that we will do everything humanly possible to uh, to do this um, by voluntary means, um, and, and we will work with the trade unions to to achieve that. But it's it's not going to be easy, and I'm, and I'm, I'm pleased that we've still got a relatively general, generous voluntary settlement scheme in place to help uh, enable us um, to do that, but it is, it is going to be difficult. And I, uh, the other one I'd I just like, like to point out, the other point, um, because clearly um, we need to obvious, obviously uh, have, have a, an important eye on the, um, the cost of living uh, pressures that our residents um, are under. I think we say that in, in paragraph 2.13 on page 4 that it is the intention of the administration to once again freeze the council tax uh, for 15-16, uh, providing that the conditions around the freeze grants are maintained. And I think that should give um, at least some reassurance to uh, the residents of this borough that we are trying to minimise what for many households is the largest bill of council tax. To um, meet, so uh, not not a, a, a very uh, rosy picture, I'm afraid. But uh, again, we w we will do everything possible, and, and I hope other elected members from other groups will engage in uh, trying to uh, uh, deliver this budget um, scenario. But it's a very difficult uh, picture going forward. So I'm just going to ask C cabinet uh, to agree the recommendations uh, the recommendations set out in paragraph. 12.1 and 12.2. Uh, are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. There was one other point, sorry, I, I wanted to make in this report, which I just wanted to clarify before we leave this report. 2.10, 2 paragraph 2.10 on page 4, um, states that there was assumption that any reduction in government specific grant funding would be met by a corresponding reduction in the service that previously received that funding and the reduction of the grant will not be funded by the council. I, I think that's too stark a picture. Um, I think we would want to leave ourselves the flexibility to possibly 
um, provide funding for cuts in specific grants, but we do that as part of the overall budget decisions that we make. So I, I just like to maybe temper that paragraph a bit. I think it's a, it's it's too um, uh, sort of um, categorical in saying that we will not fund um, areas of the, the budget that are. Uh, where we've had cuts in specific government grants. We, we may want to do that, but we'll look at the overall financial context of the council first. So just to clarify that point. Right, very good. So I'm going to move us on to um, the next item, which is item five, the financial monitoring for 2014-15. Um, again, this is a, uh, the, the, the usual sort of detailed report on the, uh, the budget thus far. Um, there was just really one point I wanted to um, just dwell on for a moment, and um, that's, that's uh, captured in the, the point about the, um, the fact that we, we have identified a, uh, a budget that is overheating at the moment to, to the tune of around three million. It's a, it, it, it mainly concerns uh, pressures within the community care um, area. I talked about the pressures generally within the, the uh, uh, adult social services budget, but I'm, I'm, you know it's good that we've identified this early in the financial year, and uh, the report talks to some extent about uh, 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 actions we're taking to mitigate that. But I, I just, if I could ask, can I ask Graham, Graham Watkinson, director of adult social services, just to maybe expand on on this item a bit, Graham, and just. Talk us through um, the, the you know the pressures on the on, the, on that particular budget and what we're doing to bring that back into line. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, the financial monitor monitoring um, identified uh, potential overspend of uh, three million pounds. Um, that's uh, in essence to do with the, um, the range of savings projects that we've uh, outlined for 2000. We do have a significant and stretching savings agenda this year, the budget's been reduced by £11 million. Um, so uh, in terms of the range of projects that uh, are around that, we've, we've got a whole programme in place to, to reduce costs. Um, in essence, we are looking at a number of things, delivering services differently, that's uh, including the, the models by which we provide people's care, working together more effectively with the NHS and the Northern Ireland transforming the business, looking at all of our systems and processes, uh, managing the money, it's another key area, which is really uh, a bit about equalising charges, assisted technologies, all those sorts of things. So what I can say, uh, Chair, is that uh, we have got a huge suite of savings projects. Confidence in terms of the financial confidence is a wee bit lower for some of those projects and fluids. So of that whole suite, there is about £2.3 million pounds worth of uh, projects where there's a lower level of confidence financially against them. Um, what I can say is that we've got a transformation board that meets very regularly. My role is to take the calls from each of the project managers. All of these projects are delivery um, and to uh, report into the corporate centre in terms of progress against each of those projects. So again, very tight governance arrangements in place. I'll just um, highlight some of those key projects where the concerns are. Uh, transformation of day services. Uh, we talked about transformation of day services in the last cabinet. Um, and we have uh, put, put in place a, uh, a challenge process around those day service savings so the corporate we can see how specifically those savings are going to be made. A, in this financial year, but also going forward for future financial years uh, in terms of the local authority trading model. So that's an area that's identified as an area of risk at the moment. NHS continuing care review, we've got two sets of reviews to ensure that people are um, charged appropriately for their support. One is reviewing people who are in nursing homes, residential homes, to ensure that where well, they should be funded by the NHS, they are funded by the NHS. That would then mean that the council no longer pays for them. There are also a significant number of people who have challenged the NHS to say that the pay should be being paid for by the NHS. And we, uh, one of our savings was an assumption that we would be able to claw back some of the resources that we paid out on behalf of those people. 
And, and then finally, uh, in terms of um, managing demand, what we've uh, set out is a plan to reduce the number of people who support very low cost packages through reviewing their needs and looking for more independent options for those. So all of these, all of these projects do require uh, quite considerable resources. The, um, the NHS care reviews and the managing demand reviews uh, we set up last year in the uh, community to undertake that activity as part of our restructure. And uh, we are now focusing to make sure that those reviews take place in a timely way. So very strong focus on delivering those things now. And the one, the one that is uh, quite difficult to get into that we are struggling with at the moment is the NHS related um, continuing care challenges where we haven't been able to identify the people because of data requirements that they have. So again, there's, there's a, a, a real focus on getting that information, but we are struggling with that. Okay, thanks Graham. I, I mean, I think that's reassuring that you've got a, a kind of uh, action plan in place to, um, to to address all those issues. And obviously we have a, we have a regular monitoring report at Cabinet, so I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll sort of look at progress on this on a, on a regular basis. So thanks, thanks for that. Cheers, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to recommend to Cabinet that we read the recommendations in, uh, item, in section 12 of that report. Is that agreed? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Greg. Okay, uh, that takes us on to item 6, which is the financial outturn report for 2013-14. And um, I just wanted to, to highlight that the, the particularly on the revenue outturn for 13-14, um, we've got a, an underspend, uh, we're reporting an underspend um, of five million, um, which, I mean, given that we started 2012-13 um, with an overspend of 17 million, I think is a, an amazing um, turnaround uh, in performance, and I think it makes sense that this is included in the, um, you know, as part of the remodeling reserve, because that's going to be our a big core of our resources over the next 12 months. So um, I think that's uh, that, that's a good uh, uh, a result. And, and, and my thanks to all the uh, the officers who worked hard to um, you know to turn those budgets around. Um, so I'm just going to ask. Uh, we've got detailed reports on revenue and capital and a collection summary. So can we agree recommendations in item 12 on that report? Agreed. Thank you.